Hey there lads and ladies, it is Petrifying Pumpkins here and I am back with another PS Viewer video, PS, well, slash PS Viewer 2. So in this one, as you can probably see behind me, I'm going to be making tiers, but this is going to be based on the PlayStation first party studios that I think are going to be, you know, most likely to be working on a PS Viewer game in the future, so PS Viewer 2 most likely, and like the likelihood of that happening ranked from, you know, from definitely all the way down to, you know, not a chance in hell. Never gonna happen. So, a few caveats I should mention. I have included Blue Point Games here. Uh, even though it hasn't officially been confirmed that they will be a first party studio, but there was that huge leak from the Sony Japan Twitter account, so they're almost certainly going to be a first party studio. Not that it's gonna matter too much for this list anyway. Uh, I've also included the recent edition Housemark and Nixes. So Nixes and Sony XDev are kind of going to be also weird kind of companies to talk about, but well, I guess we'll talk about them when we talk about them. So yeah, I just want to go through each studio, which ones I think are going to be like most likely or least likely, or maybe, or definitely, or unlikely, or probably, or whatever, to give us some first party support in the next generation PlayStation virtual reality headset, whatever that thing is going to be called. Let's get into it, shall we? Starting with, I suppose we start in order of what we see here, Blue Point. So, I'm putting Blue Point in the unlikely pile. The reason I'm doing that is, well, first of all, they might not actually even be a Sony first party, but let's assume that they will be. Let's assume that that leak was right and that nothing changed. These guys are famous for remaking games. Now, that's not to say that they can't remake a PlayStation classic such as resistance or kill zone or something like that and then add a virtual reality mode onto that but what i will say is they've got absolutely no history with virtual reality uh, i don't think they've ever even spoken about it publicly that i can recall like they've never mentioned anything like that and there's not going to be a huge amount of virtual reality games out there for them to go back in the playstation catalog and pull from i mean what are they going to do you know remaster or remake london heist i don't think so uh, maybe in a few generations. Next generation, maybe. But Blue Point, I think they're pretty straightforward. I think they're going to be making flat games for the PS5. Obviously, things can change. Maybe they'll be allowed to make their own game for Sony, and then Sony will be like, whatever you want to do, and then they'll be like, well, actually, we have a secret passion for virtual reality. I just don't see it happening. Next up, then, is Sony's S London studio. And these are the guys who made, they basically launched the PlayStation Virtual Reality headset, the one that we have now. They were behind PSVR Worlds, they were behind London Heist. Uh, they're currently hiring for a new project. Now, a lot of people seem to think that that new project isn't Virtual Reality. But I find it very hard to think that they're not going to be involved with PSVR 2 when that comes out. Because they were so integral with PS Viewer 1 and Sony are going to be like, okay, well, we can't not have these guys involved. It would be baffling to me that they wouldn't be involved. So I'm going to put them definitely. Sony London Studios definitely have to be working on PS Viewer 2. Something. We will see something from them on PS Viewer 2. And if we don't, I'll make a poo on live stream. I'll have a camera in my toilet. I'll live stream me making a poo. I'll get banned. I'll end the channel basically because my credibility will be gone down the toilet with that poo. But yeah, I will be shocked. Utterly shocked. Let's say maybe they work on like a new getaway game and it becomes massively successful and they never go back to virtual reality again. I suppose that's possible. I just don't see it. Even if they were to work on a new getaway, I'm like Sony be like, okay, you have to put a virtual reality mode in this for the new headset. They have to have that support from somewhere. And Sony London is just the most obvious choice. I can't think of anyone more obvious than them. So I think most of you would agree with me on that one. Next up then is Guerrilla Games. And this is where it gets a bit murky. Of course there used to be a studio called Guerrilla Cambridge and they made rigs, mechanized combat league. So there was an element of Guerrilla that did have some involvement in the past with virtual reality, that studio got shuttered since because Riggs was a failure. I wish they didn't shutter that studio. God knows we need as much first party support on the PS4 as possible. There's also the rumors that have been circulating for a good while now. There's, there's a Horizon game, Horizon Zero Dawn or Horizon Forbidden West spinoff or something like that in the works for a virtual reality 
headsets, the next gen virtual reality headset from Sony. But it is Sony London who are kind of been linked with that one, if I remember correctly. So not actually Gorilla themselves. Personally speaking, I think I'm going to put Gorilla in the maybe pile. I mean, I don't see it happening. Not with Horizon. The next game up from them is going to be Horizon Forbidden West. That's almost certainly not going to have any virtual reality mode. But maybe the next game after that could be a return to Killzone, which is where their kind of roots are. And then I could definitely see the potential for them integrating a, a virtual reality mode by the time that comes along. If there is a new Killzone, maybe they'll stick with Horizon. But if there is a new Killzone, we're talking maybe four years time, five years time. That's going to be right in the middle of the PSVR 2's lifespan or maybe even towards the tail end of it. So they're going to have access to a far more powerful headset. It might just be a case of it will be flat and you can also have it in virtual reality if you want, which is kind of like a feeling that I'm getting that a lot of these games are going to be Resident Evil 7 style, uh, which works well and kind of keeps everyone happy. But yeah, they're by no means probably and by no means definitely uh, but. I wouldn't go far as, as far as to say unlikely. You know, they are one of the key studios from Sony, and if Sony are going to be serious about PSVR, and they really need to be with PSVR 2, this is going to be the big one. If PSVR 2 flops, or if it performs the same way PSVR 1 does, or has done, I think that's probably going to be it. They might put that on ice for a little while, kind of like with the Visa. Sony have kind of moved away from handheld gaming now for a while. Maybe they'll go back to us at some stage. Maybe if virtual reality fails, they'll go back to handheld again give that another shot but i don't know i think if they really want to be serious they have to get some big guns and gorilla is one of their biggest guns uh in the mix now might not fit horizon that's fine but killzone seems like a perfect opportunity for them okay so housemark are next this is difficult we know housemark's history is with arcadey games but nearly all of their games have been like critically successful but commercial failures and that has led them to kind of being forced to give up those arcade dreams and then they've moved on to like bigger AAA stuff which is kind of like what Returnal is although if you ask me Returnal kind of feels very arcadey as well so they still definitely have that blood in there it seems like their future is going to be expanded like they're not going to be making small titles anymore it's going to be bigger and bigger from now on is that going to include virtual reality to some degree i mean it's going to, this is impossible to say really to be honest because for one thing they were only just acquired by sony that was only just announced uh, i mean it's not like blue point where blue point are just known for remakes and remasters and i'll kind of be surprising if they do anything other than remakes and remasters for sony housemark you're going to expect them to do something new but also, you kind of know what you get with Housemark. Those kind of old school arcade st thing, style games, you know, hardcore. I don't know about Housemark. I mean, I don't know about any of these, obviously. It's hard to see them going virtual reality. At the same time, now that they've been acquired by Sony, maybe there's going to be extra incentive or maybe, dare I say, pressure from Sony on these developers to, to you know, they might say, look, make whatever game you want. But if there is a possible way you can f like shoehorn in virtual reality to some degree, even if it's just a side mode or whatever, please do that, if you can. That's kind of like what I would imagine Sony would be asking of its first party studios, as long as it doesn't affect the development of the actual game itself and doesn't take too much resources away or whatever. I've got it in the maybe pile. Thinking about putting this in the unlikely pile, but... I think maybe. Because it's such an unknown quantity right now, Housemark and Sony, who knows what their next game will be, Returnal 2. I mean, Returnal did have those first person sequences, you know, they could work very well in virtual reality. Would the rest of their game style work in virtual reality, where it's all very fast paced, 360 degrees of action going on, I don't know, but then again, maybe their next game won't be anything like that at all. So I guess it has to go in the maybe, but I'm going to keep it on the tail end of the maybe, you know, it's, it's closer to unlikely than gorilla is to maybe if you know what i mean next up is insomniac games if you ask me insomniac games are quickly becoming so right now naughty dog is like the king you know the the, the cock of the block insomniac are challenging them for that title i think the quality and the quantity and the speed that they're outputting their games uh, i wouldn't be surprised if Insom insomniac become sony's crown jewel in the next three years or so. Sony acquired them in 2019 
or something like that recently enough before that they were working on virtual reality titles they're like a big studio i think they've got like two separate locations multiple teams then within those locations so what was it stormland or stormlands or stormlander or something like that that they were working on on pc v or you know it's not pc so i don't give a shit wasn't looking at that but we know they've got some there's some degree of passion there for virtual reality it's hard to suspect that sony when they were purchasing insomniac weren't fully aware that insomniac could be one of the best studios to help push playstation virtual reality 2 when that launches late 2022 or whenever it comes out probably late 2022 uh, so i think insomniac are definitely I don't think they're as sure as London Studios. Like, I'm almost certain London Studio will do another, like, a demo disc type thing again uh, at launch. I'll be surprised if there isn't something like that. Uh, but yeah, Insomniac, I mean, they have to. They have to do something. You can't buy Insomniac for $229 million. They've made this, like, supposedly very good virtual reality game over on PC, and you can't ignore that. Uh, I assume Insomniac own the IP, maybe Oculus do, I'd have to look into that, so maybe they could, even if it's just a port of that game, if they do own the IP, again, not sure about that, but they do own IPs like Sunset Overdrive, so something like that could come to virtual reality, or a brand new IP, it wouldn't really matter. If you told me Insomniac are working on a virtual reality game, I'm going to be 100% on board with that, no matter what the game is, it doesn't have to be an established IP, Ratchet and Clank, whatever, I don't care, I'm in. Okay, next up media molecule now this you know i'm kind of surprised with the amount of definitely i'm putting up here but this is kind of cheating so media molecule i'm putting them in the definitely but that's only because of dreams dreams is already else it already supports playstation virtual reality one i think dreams is something that media molecule are going to be supporting for like probably all of the ps5's life cycle Unless something changes, I just feel like that's they're like they're building this platform. They still have to add multiplayer, and then I'm certain when PSV or two drops, I mean they're gonna be wanting to take advantage of those fancy orb controllers and stuff. I mean, so yeah, they're definitely. And they, but at the same time, I mean it's kind of cheating. I mean if they update Dreams specifically for PSV or two, then I would consider that as like you know it counts. They're supporting it. That's what this list is. The devs that are going to support it or make a game for us, or whatever. So yeah, I'm putting Media Molecule up there. But if Sony were to stop and say, okay, Dreams has had its chance, it's not going anywhere. Uh, we're not even going to bother making it free to play, which I think they would do that first before pulling the plug completely. But let's say they do that. Would Media Molecule's next game have virtual reality support? I'd say maybe probably, but no, I put that in the maybe in that instance. In that instance, I would put it in maybe, not even a probably. You know, it would be down here somewhere. Probably in front of Gorilla. But I'm still counting Dreams, so it's coming up here. Dreams PS5. Or Dreams Director's Cut, whatever they call it. Okay, next up is... Naughty Dog. The developers of Uncharted, The Last of Us. I'm putting Naughty Dog in the unlikely category. But ahead of Blue Point. The reason for that is because Naughty Dog have got such a reputation, you know, such power, cachet, whatever you want to call it, within Sony, I'd say Sony don't dictate anything to them. I think they've got to the stage now where they say, okay, Sony, this is what we want to do. And Sony are like, fine, you, you're the best, you do whatever you want. So Neil Druckmann, I believe, is president there now, and I don't think he's ever shown any interest in virtual reality whatsoever. Could it be that I have no idea what I'm talking about and Herman Hulst will come along to Neil Druckmann and say, listen, I know you got the big dick swinging around in this studio, but we're telling you to make this next game have virtual reality, so you better do it. Maybe, but I don't think that's how Sony operates. I think they give them a little bit of freedom, especially Naughty Dog. You let them do whatever they want to do because what they've been doing, everything to touch turns to gold. Whether Whatever your opinion on The Last of Us Part 2, you know, in general, uh, so they've earned freedom, creative freedom. So that's why I think it's unlikely, but I'm not going to rule it out either. So next up then is this Nix's studio. So this studio was boss almost the same time as Housemark, or at least it was announced. And this is a small studio, 
and what I believe they specialize in is PC ports. So I don't think they're going to be creating any new games themselves. I think what they're going to be doing is helping Sony port games from Guerrilla, games from, you know, Insomniac, whatever, to PC when they eventually go there. So the likes of Horizon Forbidden West, let's say that gets a PC port in three years time, they'll be working on that. So for that reason, I would put them in the no way. Because even if they were to port a PlayStation Virtual Reality 2 game to PC, that's still not them supporting PSVR 2, it's just moving again. They're supporting PC VR at that stage, so that's why I'm putting them in the no way. They don't really count. And I don't really have much else to say about Nixus, at least not in this context. Next up then is Pixel Opus. This could be, well, maybe Nixus is the smallest one, but Pixel Opus are probably like one of the smallest studios that Sony have. What did they put out last gen? Concrete Genie. They put that game out last generation, which people liked. People who played it liked. Problem is not a lot of people played it. Uh, it was kind of like artsy, indie-ish. However, key thing to note is that it did have a PSVR mode. It was a separate thing and it was like very limited, but it was like a painting mini game thing or whatever. So if you were to ask me, will Pixel Opus be working on a PSVR 2 game? I'm going to say probably. Not definite, but probably. They've shown it in the past. You know, where Sony would maybe give creative freedom to Naughty Dog to do whatever they want. They're looking at Pixel Opus, they're not usually successful, and maybe they're saying, okay guys, you need to put a virtual reality mode in whatever your next game is, or maybe make it virtual reality entirely, because the other stuff you're doing is just not working for us. I don't know. Again, I don't know the nissy grizzly, but I feel like just because they got the history of already doing this in Concrete Genie, I think there's the potential for it to happen again. Hopefully to a more expanded degree and not just a little add-on mode. So next up, people say polyphony digital, but I always call them polyphony. But I guess polyphony. Maybe that's the American way of saying it. I don't know. But these are the guys who make Gran Turismo. Gran Turismo Sport did have a virtual reality mode. It was incredibly disappointing. Well, it was good, but it was so limited. It was like one AI, no online. It was just disappointing, really. However, Gran Turismo 7 is on the horizon and it would be very shocking if that game does not have PSVR 2 support. I'm putting this in the definitely. And I'm putting this higher than Insomniac. If Gran Turismo 7 does not have VR support, I mean... Come on, what are you doing? Why did you bother with doing it with sport? And the reason why you didn't do it properly in sport is because the PSVR 1 couldn't handle us. The PS4 couldn't handle us. You're going to next gen now. You're getting a PS5. You're getting a, P a new headset. You know, all the hardware is going to be there. You can do it properly now. You're owned by the platform that owns the VR headset. So they surely will be pushing for that to happen as well because they want a headset that's going to be supported by some of the best games ever and Gran Turismo is one of the best selling games out there, especially in Europe. People love some Gran Turismo, so that name will like carry a lot of weight. Uh, I'll be shocked if Gran Turismo 7 does not have viewer support and disappointed. Next up is Sony San Diego or San Diego Studios. Yeah, San Diego Studios. I read that incorrectly. So these guys for the last, I don't know how long, I'm going to say 10 years for, for handiness sake, have been making nothing but baseball games, MLB the show games. So you're probably thinking to yourself, no chance. However, I'm going to throw a curveball, pun intended. And I'm going to stick them in the maybe pile, ahead of Gorilla. No, not ahead of Gorilla, ahead of Housemark though. And the reason I'm saying maybe is, since the last MLB the show, they're no longer allowed to make them exclusive. If they want to keep the license, they have to also provide these games to Xbox and other platforms that are able to run them. So Sony are making games for Xbox, thanks to this deal, thanks to this one specific game, MLB The Show. On Xbox, they released that shit on Game Pass. On PS5, they were selling it for $70. It kind of made Sony look stupid, you know? Uh, the way it worked out, a bit of clever marketing from Phil Spencer and Microsoft as well to make them look a bit bad too. So, if this is what they're forced to do from now on, if they want to hold on to this license, which I assume they do, or else they wouldn't agree to us in the first place, they're probably going to want to look at any way possible to make the PlayStation version of MLB the show seem better than the Xbox version. So maybe one way they could do that would be to add a virtual reality mode into MLB the show on PS5, Offer it to Xbox, Xbox are like, we don't support virtual reality, so you're like, well, it's not our fault, we tried, you know? And then all of a sudden you've got the PlayStation version having more value 
or more features at least than the Xbox version. You know, a lot of people don't care about virtual reality yet. So maybe that's one sneaky way they could add a bit of value to that. I don't know, is there some clause that there has to be absolute parity between the two versions? If so, that might not work and then, you know, it's all the way down in the no way. But I like that little scenario I've come up with in my head and I'm keeping it. All right, next up, Sony Santa Monica Studios. The creators of God of War. That's like their big thing, God of War. We know God of War Ragnarok is coming out next year. This is kind of in the same league to me as Guerrilla because we know God of War is not gonna have virtual reality mode. More than likely, but the thing now is what's gonna happen after God of War? Are they gonna just go straight into another God of War? Or are they gonna freshen things up? There's like been rumors for a long time now of like a sci-fi game that they're working on a new IP, first person. If that's all true, virtual reality could fit in there nicely too. And of course, these Sony owned studios, if there's probably an opportunity for virtual reality to work, fit in in a way that makes sense, Herman Hulse might be saying, okay, let's see what we can do about virtual reality. So I'm putting them in the maybe. Definitely, you can't say probably, you can't, well, you could probably say unlikely, but Yeah, I'm just looking at unlikely now and I've got Nazi Dog there. I'm trying to think to myself, well, why would they be unlikely and not Sony Santa Monica? So because I don't know what this new IP is and we don't know if it even exists, I'm bringing them down. But a little bit ahead of Nazi Dog, I feel like they're probably a bit more open to it than Nazi Dog, just going by gut instinct. Don't know how I feel about that though. At the same time, I can't justify putting it higher than Nazi Dog without any reason. I mean, with Gorilla, we know they've got kills on. With Sony Santa Monica, we don't know what else they have. With Naughty Dog, we don't know what else they have outside of The Last of Us. They're not going to go back to Uncharted. Maybe a different studio will take up that. I'm keeping it there for now. Maybe we'll change your mind later on. Next up, Bend Studio. The guys behind Days Gone, Open World. We know Days Gone 2 is not happening because that whole incident that got leaked where Sony were like, no, no Days Gone 2. Days Gone 1 wasn't good enough, I guess, for them. They wanted Bend Studio to work on an Uncharted sequel but Bend didn't want to, so instead they pitched a new IP that would also be open world. And they're working on that right now, and they've only just started development on that right now. I think whatever that game is, it's going to be building on Days Gone. Obviously not the same zombies, post-apocalypse stuff, but find it hard to picture it being open or virtual reality, whatever it is they're working on. So I'm going to put them behind Naughty Dog in the unlikely pile. The new games, open world, I mean, we don't know much else about it really, but no indication of virtual reality. And a lot of stuff was getting leaked about Bend at the time. Maybe if virtual reality was in the mix, that would have gotten leaked as well, but nothing was. So I'm leaving this unlikely. Next up, Sucker Punch. I'm putting these guys straight into the unlikely. And the reason for that is because I think they really found a winning formula with Ghost of Tsushima. I can see them doing Ghost of Tsushima after Ghost of Tsushima after Ghost of Tsushima from now on. Maybe alternating between single player, multiplayer, single player, multiplayer, I don't know. But uh, I just do not see them going virtual reality at all. I find that hard to picture. The only thing that makes me hesitant is that they did briefly support the move controller on Infamous two or whatever it was where you could aim with the move controller <sighs> so they are open to supporting these things then again no i think if they do alternate between ghost of tsushima and a different ip that ip is probably going to be infamous what infamous work in virtual reality or an infamous style game keeping us unlikely but maybe less unlikely than the rest Team Asobi next. These guys used to be Sony Japan. They became Team Asobi. These are the guys behind Astro Boss. Uh, so you would imagine they have to be up here. They have to be. So anytime a new peripheral comes with the PS a PlayStation system, so the PlayStation 4 it was the camera. They did Playroom for that, and then the PS VR came out. They did like a, a VR Playroom, and then they did the full-fledged Astro Bot Rescue Mission. PS5 came out, and then they did the uh, Astro's Playroom? Astro, what's it called? Whatever, the one that shows off the new controller on the PS5. You know, that's what they did recently. Everything they touch seems to be well received. Everyone likes it. And of course, like Astrobot really got the spotlights in Rescue Mission. Underappreciated because not many people play it because it's 
PlayStation VR exclusive, but I mean, it just seems like a no-brainer that these guys are going to be working on not just a PSVR 2 game, but almost certainly an Astro Bot sequel for the PSVR 2. And I'll be shocked if it's not there. Last one then is kind of a bum, a bum, a bummer, because it's they're kind of like the same guys as Nix's XDev, these external development studios, they're kind of, well, we put them a little bit ahead here, but they help other studios. They don't make their own games, uh, so they're not going to make their own virtual reality game. They might help studios make virtual reality game. I think they were helping, I think they helped out with the uh, White Bows Omega collection, but they helped bring that to virtual reality, so I'm sure they probably will help one of these other studios bring a game to VR, but they won't do one themselves. They're like a support studio. That is all of the studios, 16 studios, two of them support studios, not really counted. And then the rest here, I'm not sure if I like some of these. Maybe I should combine these two together. The maybe and the unlikely. Maybe I'd feel better about it then. I'm just looking at it now. One, give it a, little, a final look over to see if there's anything I'd change. Definitely happy with my definitely list. These top five up here. All of these would surprise me if they don't do VR. Maybe Insomniac should be at the end, I guess, because it is possible they'll be in too much demand to make another Spider-Man, another Ratchet, uh, that they won't have time to do a smaller VR title or whatever. But I'd still be very shocked if they don't. Pixel Opus, I think they probably will because of the history with Concrete Genie. I still just feel they probably will. I'm going to be keeping an eye on whatever their next game is for that reason. Then it gets messy down here. Because any one of the, like let's say Naughty Dog do The Last of Us Part 3. Three. There could be an additional mode that has PS Viewer 2 support. But then that would count, you know? And the same could be said for any of these. You know, maybe Ghost of Tsushima has like a sword slicing minigame. Fruit Ninja, you know? Yeah, I guess that's why I do it. So that ye can see what I think. Tell me, okay, either that makes sense, or that's a stupid reason, or this should be here, that should be down there, etc, etc. Uh, I would have done this live if I could, but I couldn't. So I can't, and it's not. Uh, so yeah, let me know down below what you think of this list, what you would change. Anyway, waffling on way too much. Thanks for watching this video, lads and ladies. Do appreciate it very much in particular. Let me thank the Patreon supporters whose names are on the screen as we speak. Thanks to their generosity, they're helping keep this channel nice and moist. Let me give a huge shout out to the following top tier Patreon supporters, Tradition, Pete Hawkins, Daniel the Pumpkin Patch Kid, and Crum. Thanks very much lads for that generosity, it really is appreciated. If you'd like to help me out over on the Patreon, the link will be in the description below. Finally, let me give a thank you to Decepticon for letting me use his music in all of these videos. You can check him on Decepticon.com, link to him in the description also. With that out of the way, I will end this video. Thanks very much for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Please stay nice and moist.